Afternoon folks, I'm David Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back out here at the Pathfinder Outfitters Kitchen. What I thought we'd do today, staying with things that are a little more obscure, we're going to make farmer's cheese, but we're going to season that farmer's cheese. We'll talk about that as we go. I've got a video on farmer's cheese somewhere way back in the Journal of the Yurt series. Adding it to this outdoor cooking series is good because it's something you can make very easily, even in a camp environment. And you only need two main ingredients if you're not going to season it, and that is milk and vinegar. If you're going to season it, you'll need the seasonings that you're going to use. So we'll talk about all of that as we go. Let's get to making us some farmer's cheese. All right, step one, we're going to make a half of a batch. So in other words, we're not going to use a gallon. We're going to use a half a gallon recipe for this, for the milk. So it'll be a smaller amount of cheese. It only keeps about a week in a refrigerator anyway. So we don't need to make a full batch. We've got a stock pot here. This is the 120 ounce stainless steel bush pot from Self Reliance Outfitters, which is close to a gallon. And we're going to use a half a gallon. So I bought organic milk for this. It's not that much more expensive than regular milk, and it will probably work and taste better for this recipe. So we'll get that out of the cooler and we'll get that in the pot, and then we'll begin to heat that milk. All right, so half gallon of milk here. This is the hard stuff, the vitamin D. You don't really want the 2%, stuff like that. You want the good stuff. Get the leaded, not the unleaded. And this is Horizon Organic Whole Milk. $2.97 at Walmart. Now, you want to stir this a little bit as you go. Because you don't want to scorch it to the bottom of the pot. But you're not trying to boil this milk. You're just trying to bring it to a good high heat where you get lots and lots of bubbles coming up from the bottom. And I'm not talking about this foamy bubbles on the top here. When we stop stirring it, you'll see what bubbles I'm talking about when we get to the right heat. Okay, we want to get to the point where we got a bunch of bubbles on the top. It's not boiling, but you got lots and lots of bubbles on the top. It's going to take a long time to boil. You take 30 minutes to boil that. You can get to this stage in less than 20 minutes with some good heat and keep stirring it to keep it from sticking to the bottom. And once you start sealing and you get all these bubbles on the top like that, like a foamy layer, that's when you're ready to add your vinegar. So we're gonna take one quarter cup of distilled white vinegar and pour it in. And then we're going to stir it in. And that is immediately gonna curdle that milk. We're gonna let it sit for about I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that. And I'm going to stir it again. I turned the heat off because the milk's already at the right temperature now. And it doesn't matter. Now what we're looking for is these chunks in here and green liquid. That's what we want. See how we got chunks in here now? And the liquid that's left behind looks green. It's called a lime water. It's basically the whey separating from the milk. We'll give it just a couple more minutes sitting there, and we're going to pull it off the heat. What we do is we want something to catch that way, a colander to strain it off, and then a piece of sackcloth. This is like flour, flour sackcloth. You can buy these towels at Walmart in like 10 packs for like 6 or $8, and you can reuse this after the fact, but this is better than using cheesecloth. And that's going to be our catchment for our cheese. Right, so now... Name of the game here is to pour this into our cloth. Just like that. And then we want to collect it up out of there. Just like this. And let it begin to drain. And we're going to take this, we're going to hang it to drain. All right, so I just hung that up right on the same nail the collar that was hanging on. Just to let it sit here and drain and cool down to room temperature. We're going to squeeze. Once we can stand to get our hands on that thing, it's not too hot. We're going to squeeze to get all the green out of that. And have nothing left but clear liquid coming out. And then we're just going to let it cool down. And then we'll go to the next step. Okay, what's this? Once this thing's been hanging for a little while and it's not dripping any liquid anymore, pretty much got cheese. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to take it out of this sackcloth. Again, we can wash this sackcloth. It's not a problem. And reuse it. So there's our cheese right there. It should be break it up a little bit, just like this. Looks pretty good. Look at that. And it is gooey, and that's the way we want it. Because now we're going to start cutting some spices into it. And I'm just going to use an Italian herb spice mix here. Just a discount brand Italian herb mix. Now we're just going to cut this in with a fork. Get those spices mixed in there really, really good. Once we get that completed, we're going to take this whole thing and plastic wrap is the best thing for this and a Walmart bag is plastic wrap. So trying to do this a little cheap, that's a good way to do it. Just dump it all on the plastic there, just like this, get all your cheese out and then Take that dude and wrap it back into a ball, just like this. Tighten it down and refrigerate. And you're good for a week. And what we'll do with this is we'll make some bread or some kind of pastry or something in this next week and we'll spread this on it and give it a taste test. All right, guys, well, listen, I appreciate you joining me today for this quick video on how to make farm cheese or farmer's cheese and add a little seasoning to it. And you can put any kind of seasonings you want to in that cheese. You could even put cinnamon sugar in there if that was to your liking, it wouldn't matter. You could put some kind of chopped vegetables in there, even some kind of a pepper or something like that if you wanted to. You could put fruit in there. There's lots and lots of ways you can spice that cheese up to make it to your liking. But this base gives you an easy methodology to start and then you can experiment from there. But I think this is a really good pioneering style recipe to show you guys. So I wanted to make sure I got it in this video series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.